In this short video, I'm just going to be talking to you about the genesis of a track. And this particular tune is called Traumstart. It was released in March 2022 on Anjuna Deep. The tune itself, you can see there are four different versions of it here, starting with version one at the top of the screen and moving down to the final version at the bottom of the screen. Now, Traumstart came, came about as a, more of a conceptual piece, really. The idea behind it was this, it was an exploration of that moment in between sleeping and waking where you're just waking up, you have a dream, it's in your head and then all of a sudden it almost turns into this particle of cloud as you're waking. <clears throat> so the original version of this track was actually running at 110 beats per minute and it ended up being quite an intense sort of wall of sound from this sort of waking moment you're trying to make sense of this dream and then at the very very end it just kind of it's almost like the dream uh, twists pivots and becomes part of your kind of daytime reality but if we listen to the main body of the track this is what the original sounded like <laughs> And you can hear it's a very kind of elegant track in a lot of ways. It has this sort of um, very, very musical, cinematic, symphonic style sort of string sweeping string line on it. Now, in this version, it's pretty slow and it's very languid. And what's happening kind of underneath the surface is a lot of distortion. So those drums are very much kind of live sounding drums. They're really fierce and really gritty and really edgy. So in version two, which was several months later, um, version two was very much based around the same arrangement, as you can see from the screen, and the same sound palette. And obviously what I did with this is I just tried to create a little bit more punch and a bit more definition, but it's largely a, a, a similar vibe and a similar sound. <laughs> You can see that in that second version the drums just have a little bit more punch they're a bit um, a bit further forward in the mix um, it's largely the same kind of vibe and then I left the song for six months and actually I was writing a whole body of work around that time and when I came back to it in November um, I, I, I was quite surprised I was quite surprised by a how slow it was because I had this idea of this this sort of melody and it was flowing kind of the way the drums were programmed was it almost made it feel like it was um, at half tempo. So even though, um, you know, this is at 110 beats per minute, because of the way the snares are hitting, it almost feels like it's at 55. So it's super sluggish and super slow. When I came back to it, I upped the tempo to 130 beats per minute. And this will be much more familiar to those of you that have heard the version that came out on Anjuna. Let's just play a little bit of it. Well, what I realised with that as well was that the 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 kind of tone of the drums and the tone of the sound of it, even though I'd moved on and I'd almost recreated the drums from scratch, there were still elements of those original drums and they were very kind of edgy and mid-rangey and sort of in your face. And, and ultimately what I wanted from this track is I wanted it to feel like a dream and I wanted it to feel like that kind of waking state. You know, the string lines haven't changed at all from day one. You can see in these final two arrangements that there's now this kind of middle section here where there's a little bit of light and shade before the um, you know the the back end of the track. And it just gives the tune a little bit of room to breathe. But I really wanted to to make sure that for the listener, the final takeaway was just this really lush kind of 
sound world and 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 all of these kind of edgy drums that had they'd almost been clinging on because I I think I'd spent a lot of time programming them and getting them to sound very naturalistic and getting all that kind of distortion dialed in and creating this sort of sense of a real wave or a real wall of sound but actually the essence of the track I, I probably hadn't quite understood it um, and so I'll just play you a little bit more of version three and then I'll solo version four and you can hear the difference between that and what is the final version and the difference really is that actually the drums on version four, even though they're, they're performing very similar patterns, they were resourced virtually from the ground up. So um, I'll play a bit of version three and then just dive into version four. <laughs> version 3 again and I think what's really interesting about that is all of a sudden when you go into version 4 it's like all of the clutter and the aggression and the noise just disappears and it's almost like the track has gone from being like an idea really to being something that's just really clearly focused. And it's really only on this last version that I feel that the drums have the right level of punch and clarity and all of the sounds suddenly feel like they have the space that the musical ideas um, deserve. So I hope you've enjoyed this little, very quick genesis of Triumph Start run through and I'll just play you out with the last few bars of the track. <laughs>